Rorschach town, baby. Okay, uh, you already heard it. So let's talk about lakes. <laughs> lakes. This, this, there's only a couple things when you talk about lakes because you already know much of this stuff. You have the background that you need so that we are going to be able to go through pretty quickly. So anyway, um, we don't really need to define lake. I think you're aware of what a lake is, but just in case, let's define it. Lake. What's a lake in your own words? Body of water. Okay. Big body of water. Oh, okay. Body, a body of water, water that's in land. Okay. Has to be surrounded by land. What else? What's else? What else is true about a lake? Moves. It's fed. Has fish in it. Not always. <laughs> it's fed sometimes. Like it's fed. By okay. It's generally fed by a stream or river. What else? What did you say? I. What did you just say? That's important. Yeah. Say it again. I don't know. What did you say? I said it was. <laughs> I don't know. you. <laughs> okay. So what? What is the water? Oh, it's fresh yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's say a, a body Ow. of fresh water. Um, it, I don't think it has to be fed by a river. So let's let's say that it it resides in residing in a much like you all half of the time. That's not a funny thing to joke about. Depression. <laughs> yeah, so, so the, and that is a requirement. The lake has to be in a lower area than the land around it. Well, why is that? So it doesn't flood. Right, yeah, because there has to be something. It's like it's like in the same way that you can fill the bucket with your water, right? You have to have the bucket. There has to be the lower. Watching river monsters and then... Hey, no. A body of fresh water... How did the Great Salt Lake form? Um, we're, we will talk about that in a different time. Okay? It is important, and it's about... Um, it's, it has the same idea as to why the oceans are salty, which we're, we're not going to talk about here, but that is a really good question, so remember that for the future. Anyway, there are several ways that lakes can form. Let's write that. Lakes can form in several ways. Let's think of a few, and there, there's many, and there's more than what we'll list here, but let's just think of, let's bring some ideas about how a lake might form. Very rarely it can, it can be a meteor impact, very rarely. We're not even going to write that down because it's so dang rare. What else? Don't mock me. Just like a lack of steak. What <laughs> what other ways could a lake probably form? Well, how did the how did the lake that was it's no longer in Yosemite, but from our video, how did that lake, the ancient lake, how did that one form? You remember? There was a glacier valley, glacial valley. No. Um, well, not necessarily. There was a glacial valley, right? But what what was? Remember, we said it had to be dammed up. What dammed up the mouth of the glacier valley? Yeah, and specifically, sediment. yes, sediment from the what? Bottom. From hey, pay attention. Good. And what do we call the the sediment that's pushed out in front of a glacier? The it's mm, not more, moraine. Moraine. Yeah. Okay. So let's put that one. So a glacial valley dammed by a moraine. That's one way a, a lake can form. A glacial valley that's dammed by a moraine. So the glacial valley already exists. The moraine it was naturally there because the glacier pushes in front of it. The same thing, the same glacier that caused the valley also caused the moraine. And then when the glacier melts, as Levi said, sometimes that water and then in the future other water just sits there in a glacial lake. There are other ways. There's another way that we already talked about. The glaciers can form lakes. You remember what it was? We had the, back in the glaciers chapter, we had a certain kind of lakes the glaciers formed. Do you remember? Yeah, they were called the kettle. Kettle lakes. Kettle lakes formed by glacial erosion, right? Whereas this one was formed by glacial deposition, by the moraine blocking the valley, this one is caused by a, a glacier scooping out just because of the way the sediment underlies it, scooping out um, sediment. Okay, and we also just yesterday learned about another way that lakes can form. What was that? No, that doesn't form lakes. What was it? Remember when the Neanders meet each other? It forms what kind of lake? Oxbow Lake. I'm just gonna put. Shh. I'm just gonna put Oxbow Lake here, and then you can, you can uh, rewind in your notes or watch the video from yesterday to figure out to remember. I'm trying to take a video of this. You need to be quiet. Um, the Oxbow Lake forms in the same way that we talked about yesterday. So remember that. I'm just gonna write Oxbow Lake. What are some other ways that lakes can form? Does, did any of these here form like Lake Whitney or Boxview? No, because there weren't. There haven't been glaciers here for. 500 million years, and the Oxbow Lake forms on very flat land where there's meanders. So what formed these lakes, probably? Man. Maybe, yeah. So lakes can be man-made. That would suck. <laughs> what do you think? Isn't a man-made lake just kind of like a big pool? 
Yeah, kind of, but but we we could put let's put man-made on here. That's going to be self-explanatory. They can be man-made. That's not the ones we're mainly concerned about. How did the lakes around here probably form? By by what? Okay, there maybe by rain. What if you go to like Lake Whitney or Boxby? There's probably what feeding the lake? A spring. A, maybe a maybe maybe probably a creek. There probably so let's put dammed creek, a creek that's dammed either by man or by some other. Form. Um, also, uh, if you've, I know this is true of the Bridgeport State Lakes, if you've ever been in the Bridgeport State Lakes, a lot of times a lake is just forms in a depression that is under the water table. So a depression in the land under, and we'll get to what a water table is in the next chapter, but under the water table. Um, so there's lots of ways, basically any depression, right? Any hole, if we're talking in layman's terms, any hole in the ground that has filled with water from any source is called a lake, right? It has to be fresh water. That's not true, is it? Because it's a salt lake. Um, so we don't, a body of uh, maybe fresh water. It could be salt water. Um, so it's just a, a lump of water on the land. Um, we're going to talk real quick now about eutrophication. So write down the word, you probably already have it as a vocab word. Eutrophication is just what we call it, and this is not, if you know the definition of this, it'll be sufficient. So eutrophication is what we call it when the nutrients, the organisms in a lake have enough nutrients that they build up. They grow rapidly over time, specifically algae. Um, and this eutrophication is a natural process, right? When the algae start to bloom, that eutrophifies the lake. But uh, also, if there's a lot of like fertilizer being dumped into a lake, it can artificially eutrophicate. It's a problem when the algae bloom where the organisms grow so fast that they choke out other organisms, right? In the same way that like weeds choke out your garden. So eutrophication, it says, um, stimulates, is the process of stimulating excessive plant growth. So basically, if there's enough nutrients for some reason in a lake that the plants can grow too fast, that's called eutrophication, okay? And then the last thing we're gonna talk about is a wetland. Wetlands are what? what? You've heard the word wetlands before, but what is that? And how is it different from the lake? It could be a swamp. Swamp's a type of wetland. How is it different from a lake? Though? Yeah, there, so there's, there, it's probably shallower than a lake, generally. I mean, that's not always true, but generally shallower than the lake. And probably, instead of being in a depression, like a discrete hole in the ground, it's probably a flat, spread out area, right? So wetlands are flatter, they don't have to be completely flat obviously, but flatter, spread out, shallower bodies of water. Um, for, for your test and for this class that's sufficient, your book does go on to talk about the specific kinds of wetlands. It lists bogs, marshes, and swamps, and basically bogs are not stream fed. They're just areas of flat land where water from the rain collects over time. That's called a bog. And then both marshes and swamps are, are fed by a stream that just kind of like spills out over the flat piece of land. So they kind of, they can form in some of these same ways. Like for instance, definitely by damming. So if, if a, a creek gets dammed and instead of there being a depression there, it just spreads out over the land, that's, that can form either a marsh or a swamp. Um, and, then a, and then like I said, a bog forms just when a flat area of land builds up rain Something really important to all of this is that we have to talk about these two things, and this, this is, we're going to talk more about this in chapter 10 in the next chapter, but we need to talk about these two things, uh, aquifer and aquaclude. And I'm just going to define those real quick here. Aquaclude. We're just going to define those real quick, and then we will, we'll talk more about both of these in the next couple of lessons. But, so an aquifer, you've heard of an aquifer before. What is that in your mind? Water. Yeah, it's water and ground. People have a misconception about aquifers a lot of the time. When they think that, like that one level of Mario, if you if you have an aquifer, it's just like a big old hole, a big old cave under the ground with a lake in the bottom. That's almost never the case. What an aquifer is, and let's define it this way, it's a layer of rock which can hold water. Where specifically? Yeah, it's underground, and it's the, it holds the water where? In its what? Like between its pores. Yeah, in its pore spaces. Hold water in its pore spaces. So that implies, and it's true, 
the 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 rock must be have what property to be an aquifer? It must be porous. It must be porous. An aquifer is a layer of rock which can hold water in its pore spaces. And so the aquifer is not the water itself. The aquifer is what we call the layer of rock, right? So that layer is called an aquifer. What kind of rocks do you think generally form an aquifer? If you had to guess. It has to be super porous. Yeah. Sandstone, probably. Um, usually sandstone, in fact. It could be gravel. Um, it, it doesn't have to be like a compacted rock. Like, for instance, a layer of, of just loose gravel underground would definitely form an aquifer. And then an aquaclude is the opposite. It's a layer of rock, a layer of rock which water cannot flow through. It's, we, I should have said a layer, of rock, a layer of rock through which water cannot flow because I shouldn't in a sense with a preposition, but you understand. It's a layer of rock, again, but this one is one that water can't flow through. And why is this important for lakes, do you think? In the same way I told you my story about when I tried to make a swimming pool in my backyard, right? Yeah, if, if, the, if, if the water, sorry, if the layer of rock underneath the lake is porous, it's just going to soak in all the time, right? And maybe, especially for this, that's okay. Because if it's under the water table, it'll just still be on, on the surface. Um, but for most of them, it has, to ha it has to be on top of a layer of rock that cannot let water through, making it an aqua food, right? Something that can hold water without it seeping in. Do you have questions about lakes at all? No. No. You, do you actually have questions about lakes? Okay, well, I bet you will someday. And when you do, I'm going to answer them for you. Bye.